Well, good Friday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you all are having a great finally freaking Friday as we enter championship weekend where the Dallas Cowboys aren't playing, and it has been really, really ugly. I, in fact, I, you know what I got to say is, being a Dallas Cowboys content creator, it's 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 easy. It's easy because of the Dallas Cowboys being the drama queens that we truly are. I don't know if you are any other team. I mean, I don't know if you're the Jets or the Jaguars or, you know, any team. Because I, I can look at the Jaguars and say Jaguars were in line to be the number one seed at one point of the season, and they didn't make the playoffs. But I don't hear anything, I don't hear a whisper about Trevor Lawrence, but Trevor Lawrence, you know, being this generational player, about him having turnovers or him failing down the stretch or if the coach should be fired, I, I, you know, the players, you know, family going. I, you don't hear any of that anywhere else. But as a Dallas Cowboys content creator, you know, we're, we're in the second week of the offseason and it's busier now than when we were actually playing games. This is how crazy it is. And let me say, you know, I, I'm one of the elder statesmen here. Shango is the, the goat goat. He is the goat of all goats. He is the one that was the originator and things like that. People call me a goat because I guess my face looks like a billy goat here. And, uh, you know, goats kind of stink, too. I don't know if you've ever actually been around goats or not, but they actually stink. And, and they're sneaky, too, because I remember my buddy Alex used to have a goat. And he was a mean son of a bitch, too. He would hide around the corner and wait till you didn't know he was there, and he'd run up on you and hit you. And he'd hit you those horns. Yeah, I, being the goat is not all scratched up to be, but be that as it may, greatest of all time is what it's supposed to be. I ain't a goat. I'm just old. But be that as it may, I feel like all these younger YouTubers, I, you know, I, I I know so many of them, you know, like Law Nation. Law Nation's been over here, you know, Vash Lombardi, he's been over here and stuff and things. And, you know, my DMVs, my Game Time Brines and stuff like that, that I feel like I'm more like Papa Smurf, you know, blue. And that these are all my kids. And seeing my kids succeed and do and take these things to a whole nother level like my man law nation has law nation he is an absolute positive beast just like vosh lombardi and it's incredible to see their growth and stuff and here it is with ray ray productions vosh excuse me uh, law nation has got jesse holly you know former receiver for the cowboys a, a good player i'm not gonna say that he's like des Bryant or anything he throws micah parsons under the bus and says he's the self most selfish player that he knows i want to listen to this i haven't heard the whole thing i'm seeing how it's blowing up on twitter and stuff but i want to respond to it because the thing about micah parsons is <sighs> micah parsons is really a tweener and if you don't know what a tweener is, a tweener is a player that's in between positions, okay? You could say Tyrone Crawford was a tweener because he really wasn't fast enough to be a great defensive end, and he wasn't really big enough to be a good defensive tackle. He could do both okay, but he wasn't great at either. He was in between the two of them. Either he needed to be a lot bigger and stronger to be a tackle, or he needed to be a, a lot more leaner to be a defensive end to be quicker. Micah Parsons is kind of a tweener because he is an incredible, he is, you have to literally figure out what to do with Micah Parsons because he is an incredible pass rusher. His speed and skills and things and his strength are unbelievable. The problem is, is he's really not quite heavy enough to be that guy also that is an every down pass rusher where he is able to hold the line with the bigger, you know, running plays. That's where he gets to be exposed a little bit. And this is where they have to figure out how to use the most out of him. We've gotten a hell of a lot out of him, but there's still untapped potential. But let's listen to this interview here because this is kind of, this is deep. His gripe at Michael Parsons is Michael Parsons to me. Right. To me. 
is probably the most selfish player on this football team. Mm. One of the reasons why Michael Parsons does not want to play linebacker is too much of a responsibility. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Definitely more responsibility yeah. for sure. I got to study harder. Mm-hmm. I got to now look at keys and formations and all that. See, when, I, well, see, when Michael get lined up yeah. and just go get the quarterback, mm-hmm. and I'm not calling him a dumb player. I'm right, not calling right, him right. dumb at all. True, true. There's no thinking in that. Mm-hmm. That's pure natural instincts. Mm-hmm. Right. You saw in the game when Michael had to drop back in coverage, yeah. fish out of water. He didn't know yeah. where to turn. He didn't know where to look. Right? And even when Michael plays off the ball, he ain't reading nothing. He's just going. Yeah. He's just yeah. going. And so linebacker requires you to be able to adjust, be able to have, you got to really hone in and focus. Micah, and maybe it's just a youth in him, yeah. Micah doesn't want to study. Mm. Micah doesn't want to focus in. And I truly believe Micah wants to be great for Micah. And if the team just so happens to profit from his greatness, then cool. Cool. But I'm not willing to have my greatness sacrificed for y'all. Yeah. Do you think he'll be uh, better in that position? Like uh, in linebacker and, and, and read? No, I know. Or do you really think he'll really be the most effective? Or do you think he can like grow into that and actually become that and, and be more effective? When I watch Fred Warner, right? Uh-oh. Yeah. When Uh-oh. I watch Fred Warner. This is a great example. I see a dude who is so locked in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Who's, I mean, knowledge-wise, is so locked in. If you just did sheer athleticism for athleticism, right? Hmm. He don't stand close to Micah. Mm-hmm. He ain't strong yeah. as Micah. He ain't this fast is true. as Micah. He don't jump higher. He don't lift nothing. Right. But this up here, mm-hmm. he laughs Micah. And if Micah ever was to get into the Ed Reed, Troy Palomalu school of film watching, right. Ray Lewis school of film watching, uh, with Fred Warner school of film watch watching, it. yeah. Right, he could play anywhere. Mm-hmm. The problem is he doesn't want to because he said, well, I've already had success Ooh. doing this and right. I'm about to get the biggest bag in NFL history doing simply this. Yes. One of the reasons why he's always going to finish second and third to those other guys that defensive play of the year award because he don't want to play in the run game. Mm-hmm. He don't want to play in the run game. Mm-hmm. And the Miles Garrett's and the TJ Watts and the Nick Bosa's and the, and the Max Crosby's, wow. they are down in, down out players. Mm-hmm. They play the run. They play the pass. They understand what they're doing. I think that is, for me, that is the biggest part of Michael Parsons' game. That And, and again, it, it could come to a level of maturity. Yeah. Right? What I was going to ask you, did those yeah. other players like grow more into that, or were they off the bat? They no, they, that, that's who they were. Like, that's like, like Fred Warner, yeah. that's who he is. Like, yeah. those guys, like Ed Reed, that's who he was. Ray Lewis, they, those guys yeah, understood yeah. that in order for me to be great, I had to have the most information that I possibly could. But Micah is, one, he's the OG. Okay. He don't got no OG. He's the OG. Yeah. He he dictates what happens around him. I've questioned it many a times. Um, when I watch the Niners play defense, I see a defense that Fred Warner is taking these guys and say, yo, yo I, I know the day's over. We're going to stay 45 minutes longer. Yeah. I don't believe Mike is doing that. I don't believe he's the OG that's saying, mm. yo, come, yo, 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 uh, 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 Clark, yo, uh, so and so. So, hey, defense. We going in here after practice is over, and we gonna put another hour in. Yo, yeah, and matter yeah. of fact, yo, y'all go home, take a shower, kiss y'all wives, y'all babies, y'all girls, y'all whatever. Meet me at my crib at eight o'clock. I'm gonna have a chef come by every, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm gonna have a chef come by. Mom's gonna cook up something. We gonna come over there. And we gonna bring, we gonna bust this film down. Yeah, he ain't doing that. Mm. It's like, yo, I'll see y'all on Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Now, when I do what I'm supposed to do, y'all going to eat off me because they're going to double, triple team me, so y'all going to eat. But all the other stuff, nah, I'm not, I'm not I don't want to sack up. That's why he had to, like, when he went and had to play linebacker, he he got on his podcast, he told anybody and everybody, I don't, you, I mean, I can just be more effective anywhere. I don't need to be at linebacker. Da, 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 da. Mm. When he got upset earlier in the season, why? They had him doing these tackle in stunts, and he was the guy that had to, he was stunting to get the other guy open. Well, he like that. No, 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 no. I'm not getting him open. Yeah, Start yeah. to get me open. That's the biggest thing. And, and I'll say the last thing is, and you hit on it, it's a culture that is built in Dallas, right? The Hollywood culture. Yeah. Um, and that's never going to change. Right. I don't care what culture you bring in. You can bring in Bill Belichick. Don't yeah. matter. I don't, it doesn't matter. Because Jerry Jones established that we are the biggest brand 
in the world. It's a good earn it. You know, uh, I mean, with, with you, Jerry Jones, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, the gift is you got the biggest brand. You're going to keep making money. It's going to be like the, the Hollywood of football or of sports, but it also affects the players. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've been saying it for years, man. As soon as you put on the Cowboys jersey, as soon as you get drafted, you automatically – at the highest level, you know what I'm saying? And for with sure. anything, once you get into that spot, like with anything, yeah. it's, it's going to automatically affect your mental and the way you look at it and all that. And I think that comes down to some of the issues that we have. Do you, know you think that there needs to be more of a discipline with this team, this, especially moving forward? Who will discipline, Micah? The culture of today's football mm-hmm. right, is a selfish culture. And I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, yeah. right? But it's a selfish culture. Yeah. And when you're here in Dallas, what you end up happening is you got 53 brands. Mm-hmm. You got 53 thing. brands. That is the <laughs> gift and the curse is yeah. that I got 53 brands. Micah has a widely popular podcast. And I'm not saying, do your podcast. Yeah, do it. Do yeah. it. I'm not saying, yeah. listen, bro, 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 I ain't going to mm-hmm. never tell you not to make your bread. Make yeah. your bread. Do what you do. <clears throat> but there's 53 brands. Yeah. And when you got 53 brands, you got 53 dudes that you got to try to rein in yeah, to, to be unselfish, mm-hmm. unselfish and really to see the greater goal outside of themselves. Yeah. And it's difficult when everybody's telling me I'm the greatest. Everybody's comparing me to LT. Yeah, everybody's yeah. saying that I'm the, I'm the nicest thing since sliced bread. That's nothing to help with you. So, so, yeah. so, so now, and again, like, like I said, who is his OG? Wow. Now, I'm gonna let you, I'm, I'm gonna leave that one right there for you guys to decide on that one. Um, clearly, being an edge rusher when you're you, <laughs> this is the nice thing about being a defensive player, and why you'll see a defensive lineman typically be better or an edge rusher better, and then say an offensive lineman coming out of college. It's a lot simpler. And if you're telling me my job is I got to beat that tackle to the quarterback. And that's it. That is true. That's a hell of a lot easier than being a linebacker and understanding I've got to make the calls. I've got to know my gap responsibility. I've got to look to see, is it a pass? Is it a run? Am I covering somebody in the slot and so on? There is a lot more that goes into being a middle linebacker, a a weak side linebacker, or, you know, as opposed to an edge rusher. It just is. And there is a lot of truth to that. And I'm not going to say that Micah Parsons does or does not do that because I don't know. I don't know that Jesse Holly knows. He's giving you his own opinion on what he sees with Micah Parsons. And this is where you wonder, and this is, of course, because the Cowboys are falling short. And, you know, I'm going to be the one out here that still says for football, for the shows, for Vegas, the best thing in the world that has happened for everybody out there in the NFL world is the Dallas Cowboys losing. The fact that here it is, we are going through with Dak Prescott being disrespected by, you know, teammates, family members, that Micah Parsons is now labeled as selfish, that we've got, you know, Al Harris, if he's going to go with Dan Quinn, that Vegas, that literally a billion dollars went to the gambling companies because everybody put all their money on the Dallas Cowboys and were wrong. All of the talking shows that Skip Bayless is now in a, a feud with Micah Parsons and he's literally sharing like crazy his response to Micah Parsons and why he now has to go to the bathroom during his shows since COVID and some crap like that. That the Cowboys are what put the people talking in the NFL. Now, I don't know. I know this much about Micah Parsons. I don't know about him studying and doing those things, but you cannot say that Micah Parsons does not put in the work. I'm not crazy about the podcast, but when he's working off out in the off season with Wadsworth, trying to become a better pass rusher, when you see him in the gym and all of those things, trying to make himself the strongest he can be, the fastest he can be, and so on, you can say that he is not you know, one of those guys that's just resting on his laurels. You could look at, say, Chase Young when he was Defensive Player of the Year as a rookie, 
excuse me, rookie defensive player of the year, that he got fat and out of shape the next year and just kind of said, hey, I, I've already got it made. So I don't know if Jesse Holly is right or wrong, but what I do know is we got to do better than what we're doing. <sighs> Winning cures everything, and that's the bottom line. All right, good people. We'll definitely be talking more about this tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. I'll be here at the Man Cave live streaming, 9 o'clock Eastern. Appreciate it. Uh, Ray Ray's podcast, great content. Shout out to everybody on there. Peace.